Hey everyone, it's Travis Michael. I'm working on this train rooftop unit back here behind me. Got a service call for no heat. And this is just yet another good example of why it's so important to really be extremely thorough with your checks to make sure you're diagnosing the correct part. Let's jump into it. It's a little windy up here today. I hope it doesn't mess with the audio too much, but we're gonna go through this anyway. So I arrived on site. First thing I did was through the unit test mode, these train units have the test terminals you jump out and uh, forces all the stages on. It starts with the fan, goes through economizer, cooling, then heat. So once you get in heat mode, you pull your jumper off of the test terminals and it will stay in there. So I observed what was happening with it. Uh, I could smell, you know, the inducer fired up. I could smell gas, like it was trying to ignite. Um, it just wouldn't, wouldn't ignite. So these have the hot surface igniters on them. You know, it's a lot of people instantly be, all right, it's just a hot surface igniter, and, you know. Um, yeah, maybe they check it out real quick or whatever, but, uh, you know, I always like to be very thorough and make sure, I, you know, what I'm ordering is what we need, and uh, we don't need anything above and beyond that. So, these are fairly simple to check. You can just use an ohmmeter, and if you just, uh, you know, go on Google and just write, you know, train hot, use, hot, train hot surface igniter ohms, there's actually a pretty good chart. And the one I found has all different model and ser uh, model numbers for the igniters themselves, and it says what what type of equipment they're in. Um, you know, basically right here, I don't know if you can see that, but right there is the number that you would need. It's the T31, or excuse me, 231T, and it says the chart says. And I got my other phone here. I pulled up the chart on it, and gives me the room temperature resistance would be 40 to 90 ohms so i checked the across the two prongs in there and i was reading about 80 ohms so you know it doesn't sound like it's bad uh, you know it's, it's within the, the correct range so i said you know what let me plug it in i'll throw my amp probe on there and see if it's uh, pulling any amps because also on this sheet it says 4.25 amps at 132 volts so i said i should get some sort of amp reading so you know let's fire it up let's run through the test program again and see what happens uh, I got no amps going through it, so I said, all right, well, now let me check the voltage. So, basically, I'll show you real quick, but I just stuck my meter leads right in to here, and I let it go into heat again. And we'll check that out right now. I'll show you what I had. So, it's trying to fire the heat now. I got my meter leads inside the connection at the hot surface igniter. And I'm reading, it's hard to see, I got 87 volts. You know, so it's like, what's going on with that? You know, they should be reading about 120 to 130 there. So, what I did next was trace that, trace back the wires back here, pop these off the board, and I read my voltage to see what I had there. I'm reading the same thing that I'm reading down at the hot surface igniter plug. So far, what I can tell is it's not the igniter. Appears I'm not getting the correct voltage to the igniter. As I said, I traced it back up to the control board. I pulled those wires off. Terminals at the control board also read the same voltage. So the question is, is it a control board problem? The next step would be to check the input power into the control board. Here's, this is L1, my 120 volts. So I'll just pull that off the board and I'm going to read it. So here I'll read from L1 to ground. We've got 130 volts. So what do you think? The control board? Well, that wouldn't be correct. It's important to note that this control board powers from 24 volts. This 120 is just being broken going to the igniter. So that's not actually powering that control board. Anytime you're reading voltage, you always want to read across L1, L2, L1, and neutral, whatever voltages you're working with. You know, in this case, it, on the wiring diagram, it says L2, but it's actually neutral because it's 120 volts. So now we're going to check L1 to neutral. You can see I pulled off my neutral wire and I got my leads in there and I'm only reading 40 volts so obviously we know that there's actually a power supply problem to this control board 
So what I did next was I referenced the wiring diagram for the unit just to see where these wires go. And they go straight back to the transformer. And immediately I found, looks like our common wire or neutral wire popped off of the transformer here. If you reference the wiring diagram, here's the igniter probe. Here's my ignition board. That's L1, L2. Comes back, you can see it hits the green. So it's got a ground and the white wire. So it's green wire, white wire, and black wires on X1. So we know now that that wire popped off. So we're gonna take a look into that and see what the hell's going on with that. I killed the disconnect for this unit. This way I can work in here safely. And we can see that this is very loose. It just pops right off. I'm just gonna pinch that down with a pair of needle nose or channel locks just to make it a little tighter and try to get it on there with a secure connection. All right, so I squeezed down a little bit on that with a channel lock, put it back on, much tighter now. It's not just popping off the way it was before. I put all my wires back on a control board, plug the igniter back in, we're gonna fire it up and see it run. Got the unit in test mode now, I'm just waiting for it to come around to the heat cycle. It's running through the compressors at the moment. A couple more, couple more seconds, hopefully it was firing up in the heat mode. On a side note, just curious how many of you guys out here deal with this stuff that I deal with. You see all these solar panels, and I left some tools over. I was working on that unit before, and I came over to this one, but I left the, my uh, digital manometer over there. So I gotta go back and get that. And then the roof hatch is all the way in that corner. And they got the, all this laid out in a grid. So you gotta like walk around in corners and whatnot, well, whatever. But it's firing up now, so let's see what's happening. I'm gonna pull my jumper off real quick so it stays in heat mode. It's running, nice and hot. You can kind of see the steam blowing at the camera from the uh, moisture. Well, that's a nice, quick, easy fix. I tell you, there's nothing more gratifying to me than the service call that you can fix without having to even leave the roof. You know, a lot of times you got to run out and get parts or run down to your truck or whatever. And especially rooftops I work on a lot. All these solar panels, large warehouse buildings. It's very nice to just be able to come up here, especially at the end of the day, and fix it without even having to leave the unit. But obviously, this isn't a perfect world. That would be nice. But, um, you know, most of the time, I think you do have to run out and get some sort of parts or, or come back the following day. But, hey, customers are going to be happy that it's running. Appreciate you watching the video. Had a little bit of hiatus. I haven't been posting much lately, uh, but I'm going to try to get back on it. It's just been uh, crazy busy in my uh, in my life. So, you know, good things though. Good things, nothing bad. So, uh, you know, if you guys like the videos, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Comment down below. If you guys need any help or any questions or comments on what, what we're doing here, just, uh, you know, comment. I'll, I'll try to get back to every comment that I see. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.